Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll learn about continuous random variable. So first let's get some definitions straight and we will see an example and learn some more definitions and see another example. So unlike before, we'll first see, any, first see some definitions and learn about some examples. So first the probability density function of a continuous random variable gives the likelihood of any outcome in a continuum. So it basically gives the probability that the value in a continuous set might take. That is the probability density function. So the probability that a random variable x takes in the interval a b is given by the probability density function rho x we denote it by rho x but sometimes in literature you'll find it denote it like this fx of x but for convenience we'll denote it by rho x because yeah you'll understand in a bit in by the end of the course let's say why we denote it by rho x so let's say what what the probability is of the random variable in the interval this is just So integration between B to A, because it's a continuous case, it's very understandable, we'll replace the sum by the integration. So this is the probability within that interval, B to A. And another thing to note is the probability density function or probability distribution function is normalized So that equals one. It's a very important thing. And the limits are minus infinity to infinity because x takes values between minus infinity to positive infinity. Okay, if x took values from zero to infinity, then we would normalize with that that limits in the integration. Okay, so density function basically tells us what the value is around that certain x. Let's say x is a certain value. A density function tells us what the probability is around that certain x. So a question for you would be to think the di discrete analog of our density function. If you can think of the discrete analog, it's very easy for you to understand how things work in the continuous case. So let's see an example. Example 2, example 1 was in the discrete case. So let's label example 2. So we have a non-normalized, they have given us a non-normalized density function, which is rho x. normal normal it's it's a non-normalized density function of a certain continuous random variable i haven't yeah okay so find probability such that x is greater than one so what should be our first job when we see a non-normalized density function it's simple we normalize it so 
let's first normalize it that is we do the integration so it's okay the integration is pretty simple it's just it's tan inverse x or r tan x whatever you like to call it infinity it's just pi so our normalized one so our normalized density function is now pi 1 plus x squared so if you do this integral you'll see that from minus infinity to infinity if you do the no integration of the normalized one you'll see that the value is one so that's how that's how we normalized a density function so what is the probability so now what is the probability that x is greater than one so how do we do it we start with one to infinity and our density function normal of course the normalized one so if we do it one over pi then inverse x with limits 1 to infinity this is pi over 2 minus pi over 4 this is just 1 over 4 so this is the probability this is how you find the probability in the continuous case okay so now let's see what let's see some more definitions that is mean of a continuous random variable so let's first see what remember what the discrete case was discrete case was x x small p of x uh, this formula made sense if you think about it that the mean or made sense because if you say if you have an equally probable event let's say with n outcomes then the probability of each one of them is 1 over n so arithmetic mean is just if you remember what arithmetic mean is, it's just you add all numbers and divide by n if there are n possibilities. So x n over n. So if you have, if you know how to find the average, this is how you do it. It makes sense in the discrete case. Okay. Now, in, in the continuous case, how do we do it? In the continuous case, obviously the summation will be replaced now by the integration. It's x. In, play, in this place, we'll have the probability density function rho of x dx. So here we assumed possi possible values of x are all real line values, that is from minus infinity to infinity. But say if x is within 0 to infinity, then the limits should be changed accordingly. Let's say it, it's all positive, it's non-negative in non-negative values, then yeah, you have to change the equation limit. So also variance. is similar to the discrete case to discrete case which is okay let's just write sigma squared this is So in here, so 
So here, this is how you find the variance and the standard deviation again, is just the square root of this. So I'm, do, I'm not writing it again. So now let's see an example and things will become much clearer. So, so we have a normalized density function. Let's say we have a normalized density function. Normalized density function rho x lambda x lambda exponential minus lambda x and let's say they ask us show 1 over lambda and the variance 1 over lambda squared let's see how we do it So first note what the what our limits of integration will be. So if you look at the exponential random variable, it's defined in the range zero to infinity. So in the range, in the range zero to infinity. So so this would be lambda x exponential all all you have to do is some integration by parts and you will get one minus sign down so minus minus it's a positive and the lambda and one over lambda coming from here will cancel out and we did integration by parts so you have one over lambda and since to find the variance we need this guy so this guy is also fairly simple it's just replace x by x squared i missed a dx here okay so again the lambdas cancel out since you have if you take a derivative, so integration by parts again. So it's twice. Again, this is just, you can evaluate it explicitly, but it's just that. So, but with, it's just, okay, it's, uh, to be precise, it's this, so 2 over lambda, and done. So the variance would be, one over lambda squared so this is our variance let's see another example example three so again we are given a density function x greater than zero and elsewhere So now, let's first normalize it, go x dx to infinity here, dx, okay, all of this is equal to 1, so if you do, again, integration by parts, Oh no, you, you just have to integrate it. There's no integration by parts. You get k over 3. And it should be equal to 1. And k equals 3. So our density function 
now stands x greater than 0 and 0 elsewhere okay say they ask us to find what the probability is within this range we do the integration one this is this exponential minus and you have a plus for the second term this is just zero four seven three zero eight so this is the probability of the random variable being between two and one okay so before ending the section we will talk a tad bit about some relevant type of continuous distribution functions. Mainly we'll talk about the Gaussian distribution function, Gaussian or normal distribution function. There are other types of distribution function, let's say Poisson or binomial, but the Gaussian one is more relevant to our discussion. So the Gaussian is defined Two by sigma squared exponential mu squared sigma squared. This is the Gaussian distribution function, and the limits are minus infinity x infinity. When do we use it? It's when you have a very large number of events that then we use the Gaussian distribution function and we'll see more examples of it when we try to solve more problems. And remember here mu is the mean and the sigma is standard deviation. So they're usually represented by, the distribution is represented by this and mu sigma squared where we plug the mean here, mean and variance. And in some literatures, you'll see this being used. It's just depending on the textbook you're studying. So the Gaussian distribution function is a bell-shaped curve, which is symmetric upon its mean and has a maximum value of guess this one so let's write it. so the gaussian distribution function symmetric okay it's symmetric upon the mean has max value so when, just try thinking, when does it obtain the max, maximum value? I'm saying it has a maximum value of this, which is approximately. So when, where does it have it, have the maximum value? When x equals the mean. So at x equals the mean. Okay, so if you want to see a graph of it, let's say I plot density function here, x here, let's say, it, it looks something like this. Let's say this is a number two, so this is a Gaussian distribution function with mean two and variance 1.5. So this is this sums up our discussion, our small discussion on continuous random variables. This was a rather a rather short discussion because I'm guessing most of you are familiar with this and if you and we'll do more problems and things will become much more clear.
and this is these are the things that we need on the probability side if we need further things we'll study them on the go thank you